time at uh, DEF CON 11? Rocks? OK. Um, information leakage, actually, I wanted to uh, name it information spewage because it's funny as you uh, go through and start looking at information that's available out there, it, it kind of uh, surprises you. Anyway, call your plumber because your information is leaking. What we're going to talk about today is a background of how the speech was uh, conceived, information about security leakage, what the risks are to organizations, and then many fun little trips, uh, tricks and tips, uh, technical tri uh, tips uh, for technology people and process, and also for those that actually have to protect from this kind of stuff, some tricks on how to protect against it. Okay, beginning of the, ba the background was The Art of War. Uh, I just happened to be reading it lately. And one of the things I say is that if you know the enemy and you know yourself, uh, you need not fear the results of 100 battles. In other words, you're going to win. Uh, if you know yourself but not your enemy, uh, <laughs> you're going to suffer defeats and you're going to succumb to any battle if you neither know neither. Um, a lot of times in information security, we have a tendency to either know ourselves, maybe, and not know the enemy. Or in many cases, uh, during assessments, I found they knew neither. Here's a, a chart that I put together that uh, I'm dealing with all the time. On the left-hand side, you see the red. That's pretty much what uh, most of the world's sitting in, as far as from a security standpoint. If you notice, you have the unsuccessful attacks discovered. Those are basically people that attack systems and lose. Basically, don't successfully get in, but they're discovered. Usually picked up by intrusion detection systems or misconfigured systems, IDSs, whatever. Um, and then we have successful attacks and they're discovered. What I'm focusing on today is successful attacks that have been undiscovered. It's funny, I've, uh, again, I've done uh, a lot of assessments. And usually, a six months after a year after doing an assessment, um, we come in again and we find out that sometime in between they've made a change. There's an echo back there. Cool. Um, huh? Oh, damn. Okay, so what we have is a level of protection, but I think there's a lot of uh, successful attacks that really go undiscovered. Basically, the NT guy goes, well, my machine locked up, I'll just reboot it. Unfortunately, it puts it a backdoor or whatever, and a year or two later, it's found or discovered. So that's the basis of that after a conversation with some friends. Um, what is information leakage? Information leakage uh, results either purposefully or accidentally. Uh, information that's released that can put your staff, intel uh, intellectual property systems or networks at risk. So that's pretty wide category. Risks of it, um, if you understand and have the patience uh, of looking this information up, the success of attack dramatically increases. You can find many, many, many vulnerabilities that have been overlooked by the you know, press now vulnerability assessment type stuff. Also places your uh, organization at competitive disadvantage. If your competitors can look up information that's uh, public about you. Talk for as long as you want. Oh, I don't want to talk that long. Okay. Good, I can tell stories. <laughs> okay, it can put you at a uh, major disadvantage. Um, also, there's a lot of legal risks to this information being leaked out. And also can do uh, physical harm to staff or uh, faculty. It's funny. Um, during, uh, from an intellectual property standpoint, uh, this is, it's kind of the, um, well, I've used this to track people back that have um, threatened uh, the life of individuals and also, in one case, uh, threatened to blow up a facility. So uh, they were not aware of uh, all the information out there about themselves. Type of information leakage is technology, people, and process. Um, I'm going to very quickly talk about technology. I think everybody else talks about technology here. I'm going to focus on people and process, which is typically uh, left out in this kind of conversation, but it's as critical. Okay, from a technology, we really have the passive listening world, which is sniffers and scanning of frequencies. 
and also the active um, word driving, word dialing, scanning of networks. Pretty straightforward. Um, types of things that we can learn about a network, layer two, we can find out about the MAC addresses. With the MAC addresses, we can kind of uh, figure out what kind of network card they have and make some assumptions about what platform they're using. Um, SSIDs, frequencies used, um, things like uh, wireless. Uh, active probes, things like NMAPX probe, ICMP, Picado, uh, passive, which is sniffers, um, Kismet, and radio scanners. Pretty straightforward. Oh, this is my favorite. Layer 4 and above, SNMP. Um, systems, I don't know, if, uh, if you guys actually uh, looked at some routers that have SNMP open, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, a lot of people decide to put SNMP up as firewalls, and they leave this, uh, uh, this firewall, the SNMP, open to the internet. Uh, several assessments that I've done uh, I scan the network, I find it, and I enumerate the SNMP. Well, luckily enough for me, I find out what processes are running, so I know what protocols are using in-house. It lifts all the internal networks, all the default gateway information. It's really wonderful. It tells me what uh, ports are currently connected during the day. It's pretty neat. Um, systems. If SNMP is open, uh, you're able to enumerate things like um, hard drives, processes, applications that are running, makes it real easy to uh, determine what's vulnerable. Application servers like web servers. Uh, if you guys have gone to Netcraft, Netcraft will tell you uh, what web server somebody's using without literally going to the website. It also give you a history of the website and give you uptime. Advantage, well, there's a good idea you can find out a version if a vulnerability becomes uh, available. You can go here, look up uh, what um, platform they're running, and uh, test it if you choose. Uh, also information with chat, email, Usenet, mailing lists. If you haven't seen it, in the header of all these, there's lots of good information that can be used to track back to you. Um, and then applications. Um, is Tom Markin um, speaking? I know he spoke at Black Hat. Is he speaking this weekend? I guess not. Um, uh, Thomas Arkin did a presentation at Black Hat uh, on webmail, where he went through webmail and talked about all the information that's given away when you use webmail and how it's used back uh, to track back information. So no, you're uh, not anonymous when you're using webmail. Uh, some special cases, firewalls. I've had uh, so, uh, several companies tell me, no, you can never figure out what kind of firewall I'm using because uh, it's, you know, it's magical. I can't figure out what it is. Well, there's two papers out there. There's uh, a paper out there and there's a tool out there to determine what kind of firewall they're using. Uh, I'd recommend and suggest uh, pulling that up. And also Tempest. Um, we're getting more and more into looking at radio frequencies and determining what radio frequencies different things are running on. Those are some links to uh, Tempest sites, which will give you ideas of what frequencies are being viewed. As an example, um, went over to a friend of mine's house. He has a new baby and everything. We had a baby monitor. He just bought a Panasonic uh, telephone. We we're sitting there, and we laid it down, and okay, we sat and had a beer. And um, as we're sitting there, the two of them together, we started listening in on phone conversations from the neighbors. Okay, apparently the phone, the baby monitor, the phone was bleeding enough information that through the baby monitor we could listen to all his neighbors. So we said, hey, this is kind of cool. So we went a block down the street and we could catch more. It's kind of cool. Um, radio emissions are, are coming out of everything and can be tracked. Okay, people, the fun part. If we're gonna track a company, um, typically we'd, what we'd wanna do is we'd wanna go to their website if you wanna find out information. Uh, the speech earlier today, they talked about how you can use uh, Google as a proxy to do searches against uh, the website, looking for things like email, looking for things like uh, uh, company names, things like passwords, things like that, without directly going into the website. 
which is with the uh, domain option. A couple very cool things, the web dev archives there. There's a link there called the Wayback Machine. Has anybody seen the Wayback Machine? Oh, isn't that great? It has eight years of website development. There's a lot of dumb things people did <laughs> eight years ago. There's several sites out there that I found. This is real scary, especially if you're a parent. I found uh, kids' names and sports that they were in on corporate websites. Okay, wives, what activities they're involved in. They don't do that anymore. Well, some of them don't. Um, also, Google has caches, so you can go in and do searches and find a lot of information uh, from the last time they made a change. So literally, you do a search and click. There's also a lot of technical record information that's leaked. Uh, seriously, if you have the errand record and you know what the domain name is, most people leave their phone number, their fax number, all kind of good information there that can be used for an attack. If literally you don't know where the company is, you can go to the errand record or the uh, network solutions or the whois.net, look it up and find out where the corporate headquarters is typically. Kind of interesting. And many times that's a phone number to their help desk. Hmm. <laughs> Um, marketing material. I want to show you guys that. That's kind of cool. If I can find it. Cyber alert. There you go. This is kind of interesting. You can take and put a corporate uh, information in on this. You can say, I'm looking for whatever company. And this guy will monitor 13,000 um, news sources and email you personal information about that organization when they do press releases and when they're named in any uh, article throughout the country, throughout the world. Pretty scary. Another one is Inbox, ro inbox Robot. Let's see, I think that's... Oh, it's a web dev bar. Yeah, there's the way back, by the way. Let's see. Who do we want to look up? www.seo.com. Network unavailable. Oh, well. Anyway, it's pretty neat because you can look up uh, lots of information about their internal technical people. At one point, they used to put up what their network diagram was. <laughs> Uh, that's the other thing, is a lot of corporations leaked information about how great their security was. So literally, they'll put up the, the IP addresses, what technologies they used, what firewalls, what IDSs they used. They were proud of them. <laughs> trade shows. From a people standpoint, if you go to uh, a trade show, there's a lot of information they'll give up. Trade show people leave all kind of information uh, around sitting on desks and things like that. Um, I've, I've gone to things like Comdex and literally have seen their dial-up and passwords to their corporate network sitting behind the uh, tables, uh, VPN keys, all kind of things. So, you know, <laughs> people don't protect those. Uh, bars and smoking lounges and organizational parties. I was once uh, went to Comdex a little bit earlier, and I found out there was a party. And considering I like parties, okay, I went to this party. I didn't realize it was a corporate party for this well-known database company. Well, I stood there, and the uh, corporate officers got up and told me about what their plans were for Comdex. Told me it was closed and enjoy the party to me and everybody else. Had a great time. Everybody asked me, uh, hey, where are you from? I said, I'm from Jacksonville. Wow, we didn't know we had an office there. That's pretty cool. And they left me alone. It was very cool. <laughs> I did that with HP. It was kind of cool because I did it with HP. And they said, wait a second, we don't have an office in Jacksonville. And I said, wait, can I get one more drink? I said, okay. Um, smoking lounges. If you go to a company's smoking lounge and just ask for a cigarette, it's incredible the kind of information people will tell you about the corporation. 
or a close by sandwich shop. People talk about during lunch, during dinner, they'll talk about uh, all kind of corporate information and do it publicly. Uh, company names, technology, especially if you know where the techie, uh, techies go. Great place. And obviously bars. Um, tech, tech support. Um, the people that are uh, supporting the technologies that we deal with regularly, they have their own little challenge. They have to deal with the vendor. And even worse, they have to deal with the vendor help desk. You guys have never dealt with those, have you? Yeah, okay. Well, what kind of stuff do they ask you for? Hey, give me your configuration file. Can you give me your password? Okay, well, in some corporate um, uh, agreements, you have to provide all that information. Um, what I've found is that there's a, a lot of companies that are now outsourcing that. And their expectations of security to the outsourcer are far lower than the original company. And many times they never have the authority to even test these outsourcers. Let me tell you a story. One of the outsourcers that I know about um, told me this story, that uh, they didn't have enough computers for everybody on their help desk for a week or two. And it's a well-known company that does, tech, that does tech support for some devices. Can't go into the details. But literally, when customers would call in, they would run to a single computer and print out that information, the configuration files. And then when they were done, they'd throw it in the trash. Yeah. A lot of companies um, during outsourcing agreements will forget that security is important and forget about these kind of issues, unfortunately. Um, also, another fun place that people leak information is Usenet news and web pages. Oh, those are so much fun. You can find out that if a technical support uh, question that a techie will post full configuration files with for their Cisco Pixes with the VPN configurations. Okay, in clear text. You don't even have to decrypt it. This is great. Or what kind of uh, DNS server they just configured. Or what application languages they're using in-house and what calls they're using which may be vulnerable. Ooh, DCOM, hmm. Um, here's some places that you can go. Tile.net uh, allows you to do searches. RoboFetch is kind of neat. RoboFetch allows you to put a uh, piece of information out there about a company, corporation, individual, whatever, and any time they post to the net, it sends you a copy. Any time they post to Usenet, kind of cool. You can also use the advanced search feature. I wasn't going to show it because I don't have a connection, unfortunately. But in the adver uh, advanced search feature, I can put domain, put the domain section, and do a search and come up with a list of all the employees that have posted from that corporation and all the details. Um, during some CIs that I've done, competitive intelligence uh, gathering, I have found things like... Um, what hobbies people have. One guy was into leather. That's a different story. Um, we have found all kind of information just by doing simple searches. We found a school district where uh, we found an individual that was uh, inappropriately uh, interested in uh, a woman that was inappropriately uh, interested in the football team. Let's see. Ah. Another challenge, what we call the exception to the security rule, management. Does anybody ever have to deal with that? Yeah. We're above security planning. We're above any of that. Hey, come on over. Let me show you the spreadsheets. It's okay that we have all the uh, social security numbers for our employees being passed around at uh, budget time so we can figure out how they're going to get raises. During, present during a lot of assessments, I go in and I look for this kind of stuff, and it's common, it's there. A lot of uh, educational community. I teach. I get the social security numbers for all my students, and now I can do a search and buy, find everybody's social security numbers in this one area. Um, apparently, it's not important to protect that for many 
organizations. Um, another place that information is leaked all the time is uh, during disaster recoveries or DR drills. A lot of times these people are rushed. They're, dri they're driving boxes of tapes up. They're, bo they're basically driving from one place to another. They're flying up. A lot of times these people will leave, have clipboards of passwords and all kind of other information that's public. That, that can be public just by walking up to a car and reading this information. It's, it's incredible. And it's real interesting because uh, during an early part of a disaster recovery, pretty much they don't know who's going to be there. So anybody walks in is considered an employee for a short period of time. That's kind of strange. Other information that's leaked. Posting of resumes. Oh, this is so much fun. I have found out lots of information about the corporate officers just by looking up resumes that are posted, especially when they're looking at moving, or technical community, or staff, what their backgrounds are and things like that. Um, uh, financial uh, comment boards. If you go to Yahoo Comments, about uh, corporations. You can find out a lot about the internal politics that are going on and even email people, oh geez, this is a shame. Do you know anything about this? And they'll tell you. And then that FU company, they have uh, leaked uh, internal documentation, which is always interesting. And then here are uh, six different uh, uh, websites. The tricks that uh, I use when I'm uh, looking for information about an organization or whatever, all these have emailing lists. I can pick a technology and I can pick an area. And then every day I get to see if there's any job openings in that area and then the technologies that they're using. Um, social engineering calls. Um, just make a phone call. It's, it's funny how bad it is when you make a phone call and say, hey, can I talk to the corporate whatever? Can I talk to HR? And they'll give you names, they'll give you lots of information. A lot of leakage there from the people standpoint. And also email and delivery. Um, <laughs> I have a CD that I created. It's a golf magazine CD. It has a Trojan on it. You know, it's really interesting that you can take a golf magazine uh, and a CD and take a golf magazine, wrap it in plastic, and how many corporate officers will run it? Okay, they're above security. What did you label the CD as? Oh, golf courses, of course. That was a pun, sorry, the course part. Uh, yeah, no. Oh, news sources. A lot of times, the local newspapers will have a lot of news items about the people that are within corporations besides the corporations themselves. So if you do a search for wherever the corporate office is, there's a good chance you'll find out that they were, they were involved in this community activity or that community activity and will give up the name and titles of lots of different people that are involved in this. Ah, yes, phone numbers. Here's four places that literally just by putting in the phone number or looking at names, honestly, not all four of them are that good with certain names or certain databases. It changes based on area and whatever. But by literally looking um, up whoever's name, between these four, there's a good chance you're going to find people. You're going to find an individual. Um, the, personnel rec the personnel, the WWUS search, US search is kind of cool. You have to pay for it, but before you pay for it, after you type in the information and give you the names, it gives you the age of the individual. Hey, how can that be handy? Well, if you go to the genealogy website, you can look up the family tree, and if they've posted that information, you can approximate who they are to figure out the mother's maiden name. This is information leakage for individuals that you've got to protect yourself from. Okay? Reverse phone number lookups. Oh, the fun part about it is this particular place now has cell phones. Yes, you can now look up cell phones here. Sir? Yeah, horizon.com. This is a roll up for everybody's. 
email addresses. For some weird reason, this guy keeps track of uh, uh, email addresses. Classmates.com, if you have a general age and where they grew up from their resume, what do you think you can find out about them? All kind of things. People put their hobbies, the names of their animals, the names of their kids. They put all kind of stuff on classmate.com. It's pretty outrageous. That would never be used as a password. <laughs> I didn't say that. You did. Uh, ICQ, again, ICQ, people put all kind of information up about themselves. A lot more than should go. And also, here's my favorite public uh, records place. If this is the only thing you stayed for, this is the most fun place. Dial competitive. Oh, where are you? That's the other one. We're going to talk about that one in a minute. Oh, there we go. Oh, maybe not. Where did I lose that one? I missed it again, huh? <laughs> My Linux partition died, sorry. Index robot. It's the one right after the T. Right after the T? Yeah. Here we go. This guy is very fun. This guy is an index to all the contractors, anybody that's licensed by states property records for majority of states can be found here. Driver's license information for free can be found here. Okay. Um, I just found that they put legal records and they put my son's name on legal record here. Okay. Not cool. I found out that somebody posted uh, my social security number. I've taken that off now. But um, you can get a lot of this information. Ma'am? I'm not a lawyer, and I don't even play one on TV. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to talk about that towards the end. But uh, honestly, when I've done competitive intelligence, I've been able to find passport numbers for people in Israel by looking up this information if they spend any time in the United States. I've been able to get social security numbers, what their signatures look like, um, marriage, divorces, um, pretty much any type of legal records for free. Also, again, if they are th somebody like an architect, a contractor, an engineer, they have to give a lot of that information up. There's also a physician's database with the physician's code that they're supposed to protect is on here. And if I had internet access, unfortunately I don't, um, you can go to the state of Florida and look up information about counties and then drill down from there to individuals within counties and then look at all the court records for that individual for 12 years. Oh my God, I have to go through that again. There. The other one is the uh, search systems, another free database. This has hundreds of additional databases. One of the things you're probably not aware of, do you, do you guys believe that Google has an index to everything on the net? No, it doesn't. It's interesting. Google does not index databases. There is expected from a database size. Uh, there is supposedly anywhere between 10 and 100 times more information out there within databases that cannot be reached by Google. What you have to do is you have to go out and find the front door to those places. Well, guess what? I'm going to show you where the front doors are. Okay, here's the hidden gems. See that librarian's uh, index to the internet? This is what the librarians use to look up information. 
Uh, the invisible web has a lot of great indexes. Here we go. So if you're looking for lawyer information, you can drop down there and find out lots of information about the practice. Industry, industry groups, uh, individuals within industry groups, all that information is public. Let's see. Ooh. Now, those are all the people information. Any of you guys afraid yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I teach a class in a college, and the first thing I do is I have everybody go out and do a vanity search for themselves. They use this list and a few others, and they look up information about themselves. And usually within an hour or two of doing this, I can tell that they're doing their homework because I get an email that says, I don't believe it. You should see what I found about me. It's pretty outrageous. Um, processes. It's incredible how easy dumpster diving is. Let me give you this story. Um, we're at another con. We went to the bar because we were thirsty. And while we were there, we went there very early in the morning. We looked at the trash can because it was sitting right there. We found this long yellow strip. So we picked it up. Well, apparently the process within this hotel is at the end of day, they run a strip of all the credit cards and all the people's names. Okay, this is common. And what they do is they only keep the white copy, so they throw away the yellow copy. Okay, this is real common. This is the kind of stuff that you have to, from a process standpoint, you have to put in place and say, look, yes, I know that there's little X's on my credit card piece that you're giving me. And yes, I know that there's X's on the credit card piece that you're keeping. In a lot of cases, by the way, they're not, but check. Oh, my favorite, by the way, if anybody sells things, is the merchant ID. The merchant ID and the phone number of the um, uh, credit card machine, well, that's an index into their bank account. I tell people that and they go, you're nuts, man. You're nuts. Nobody would ever do this. Well... <laughs> Yeah, that's why uh, the Secret Service announced there's 9 million people that have lost their identity in the last 12 months. Okay, backup tapes, CDs, DVDs, floppy disks. People are throwing these things away without deleting them, destroying them, whatever. They'll throw them in the trash can, they'll, give, they'll take them home. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> then they'll throw them in the trash there. Hard drives. We had a school district that decided that they didn't need those old hard drives for all their corporate machines. So they gave those, they donated to, to us, to another organization, as Linux boxes. That was so special. Well, they had, I brought to their attention, they had uh, credit card information and uh, uh, information about the kids in the school district. Not good. Um, hard drives, PDAs, PDAs for a lot of people, that's their whole life. If a PDA can be snatched, that's everything. Cell phones, a lot of cell phones have numbers you can't uh, grab hold of. Also, the cleaning staff. Um, a lot of assessments that I've done and a lot of people that I've talked to, uh, they never check their cleaning staff. And things disappear and they never take the cleaning staff to task and never confirm that the cleaning staff is bonded. But uh, <laughs> this one uh, well-known lawyer that I know kept on finding information moved and file cabinets open at night when they got in in the morning. So um, cleaning staff is definitely a process issue to check. Okay, another process information. Well, now that we've given all this information away to um, about ourselves and our financial information, everything else, the government likes to post it too. Wasn't that special? Um, if it's a corporation, Edgar will have the information. Hoover. Uh, secure systems or uh, searchsystems.net, info today. Uh, Dun and Bradstreet gives you a lot of information, even for free. Uh, the AICPA.org gives you lots of information for free. Here's one of my favorites American Express. That's their B2B information. 
They put far too much information on there about corporations. If they take American Express, um, take a look at that. And also you can do uh, Google searches on uh, targets. You want to find out what vendors sell their product or use their service? Link colon and the target domain will give you links to hundreds, thousands, or ten thousands of different places about that organization. Okay, how to protect yourself? Ah, people, limit the information um, and have it removed. Most public records, they'll have a form and a practice to remove your information, which can take six weeks, um, where literally they'll have your social security number erased from that image online, or they'll have the particular um, uh, information removed. Unfortunately, once you know it's there, you can then go back and it's still in public records physically down at whatever courthouse, and they can still obtain it. So be aware you want to request that information to be blocked on yourself. Um, Educate your staff, especially corporate officers. A lot of corporate officers don't realize they've put a lot of information out there about themselves. It's very easy to find out all the information about all the houses that they've owned and where all the places they, they currently own and who uh, signed for them. Um, it's incredible, even to the point of Social Security number and um, credit card numbers. Especially uh, about five years ago, that was the vogue within the real estate business is to, on the closing papers, to put that information at the bottom. Uh, processes. Have someone do a competitive, either you do a competitive intelligence on your organization or yourself. Go out there and do these searches. And no, you can't just press a button. A lot of the stuff isn't automated. Stuff appears and disappears all the time. Um, in the presentation, I had eight links that disappeared and they found three more. So this stuff appears and disappears. It's hard to automate that kind of stuff. But go out and spend a couple hours looking up information about yourself. I think you'll be surprised. Go out there and request it to be removed. Um, if there's information on Google, Google has a remove link. They'll remove information uh, from their database. But some um, search engines, it takes a lot more work. It's not just uh, fill in the uh, blank and go. Process, let's see, process. Basically define what's considered extreme damage to either uh, your corporation, your individuals. Um, as an example, if I'm shipping um, fertilizer in rail cars maybe, Maybe I don't want to tell people where that facility is. Um, technology, consider removing the banners from all your email servers, your web servers, uh, all kind of uh, fun things like that. What you're going to find is, uh, you know, seriously, that's what you're looking for. Ooh, this has a banner of Microsoft IIS 3. Cool. We're there. Consider removing the banners, POP, mail servers, IMAP, all those others. Also, uh, consider using crypto in a lot of that. Um, also, generally, for organizations, classify the information. Well, it, this is a difficult process. Most people have a real difficult time doing this. To say, okay, this should be treated, you know, this could, could do the, be the end of our company or our organization or put people in jail, so we're going to keep this really secret and we're going to make sure that this information doesn't get leaked. And then this information should stay here, but it can be shared and this information can be sent out to everybody else. Um, it's not real common for organizations to do that, and because of that, lots of information is leaked. Um, also, another trick, <laughs> in databases, consider inserting some misinformation. Hmm, what do you mean? Well, um, Agent Smith. I usually, in databases, I'll put a uh, bogus Agent Smith in or bogus information. That way, if that information's ever leaked, I'll know that it came from inside. Spreadsheets, things like that. Okay. 
Also, another thing, considering posted on the Usenet some piece of uh, misinformation about technology or two. Can't hurt. And also perform all your best practices in security. Well, that's all the technology stuff we talk about anyway. And that's about it. Oh, by the way, one of the interesting parts uh, I didn't mention during the news, a lot of companies during these outsourcing processes, the outsourcers get really excited that they're outsourcing and give away lots of information like, wow, this outsourcer is going to outsource the whole security department for a company. Okay, well, there's a transition period, right? Enough said. Okay, especially when you see layoffs occurring, too. Um, here we go. Any questions? Sir? You uh, had some slides that had a lot of links for places we could do some information searches. Will any of these slides be available online for your site or anywhere? I'm providing them back to the uh, DEF CON folks. They'll have it up on their website. Plus, if you want to come up, uh, if you have a uh, USB drive, I'll drop it onto it if you have it here. Or if you want to email me, feel free. I'll email you a copy. Is it on the CD? No, it's not on the CD. I made modifications to it. I added more cool stuff. Okay, any other questions? Sir? Talk about getting that information removed. You basically, as you find it one item at a time, have the manual to do all that? Yes. I found, from a public record standpoint, I found 40 references to myself. And I had uh, in um, the database the company that they outsourced to, interestingly enough, uh, I literally have to fill in a piece of paper and have it certified for every single record that I found that I have to remove or modify. So it's a very arduous process. You had a question? A lot of them will have a removal of information uh, for public records. Uh, you just have to look for it or ask the, ask the question, how do I have this information removed? It uh, has information it could lead to identity theft. Ooh, ask me later. We'll talk to the company. This could be fun. <laughs> we didn't say that. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, these databases, um, it's interesting how many um, companies will belong to associations and they'll give up lots of corporate officer information in that, which is pretty scary. Golf courses, post scores, and information <laughs> about executives, real handy. Anybody else? How are charities? Okay, what he's asking is how is charities for things like this? Um, I have done some searches uh, through charities. I've made phone calls and asked. And yeah, they'll give up some information. Oh, you know what I didn't? Uh, I didn't include one called theyrule.net. It provides information about the board of directors, and then you can search underneath that and find out where they donate. Again, I'm not a lawyer, okay? What he asked is, uh, if they say no, what can we do? Um, honestly, public embarrassment is probably the best way for a lot of these corporations to sit up and uh, uh, become aware. The other thing is there's uh, legal issues. If, it has, if it's HIPAA-based, it's healthcare-based, um, and they're not doing it, that's something that can be reported. If it's Graham Leach and Bliley, financially-based, there's, there's places you can go there. There's Privacy Act information. You have the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, where if your identity is stolen, the corporate officers might be held accountable for that lack of due diligence on their standpoint. So there's, there's some hammers that you can use against them. Can I sort of answer that? Sir? There's a new law in California called the Security Breach Information Act, otherwise known as SP 1386. If you find your data out there, you can file a lawsuit against the company for releasing your data and not informing you, and they're liable for $10,000 per record that's released. And you don't need, in Grammy, Flyerly, and HIPAA, you have to go to the regulators, and they have to decide is it worth their time 
to pursue it, but in the case of SB 1386, you can take the action with a lawyer do it. Pardon me, Joey. Oh, no problem. Actually, I want to add to that. If you uh, Did you spend time and read the law? I totally forgot about this. It's really cool because everybody from the administrator that manages the system through their manager all the way up to the owners of the company can be held liable for that uh, action. Okay, and it's, it's not only um, professional, but also personally. And guess what? Best of all, there's no limitation of liability. So if enough records are stolen, they could be charged for a billion dollars. Uh, by the way, um, uh, Feinstein, I guess that's her name, from California, she's just proposed this for the nation. Uh, it's in Congress right now, floating around. So we may see this every place. Uh, she has set a limitation, I'm not sure what it was, I think it's a hundred million dollars or something like that. So it can still hurt, especially if you're an administrator and your systems get cracked. I don't have that kind of cash. <laughs> Any other questions? Sir? Are these all free, or are they some pay, some not? Uh, the question he asked, are, are they all free? Um, the majority of them are free. There's one or two that are pay. Uh, it's interesting that with this, there are some links that you may want to check out. There's a link that check, uh, gives you information as an example about licenses. Um, each state has their own information. Um, give you an example. Please repeat question. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, as an example, driver's license uh, information. Um, in some states, you can go in for ten dollars, walk in with no identity check or anything else, and look up people's driver's licenses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had that on here, but they also give up information like the age of people, which is actually very handy. Sir? So with LexisNexis, one of the paid companies, they actually say that you have to use the information as part of the legal process or something like that. Are there similar restrictions on these free databases? The legal um, information is specific to data. Uh, let me repeat that. Um, are there similar, are there legal restrictions? Am I repeating that? Thank you. Yeah, he's waving at me in the back. Um, are there restrictions to the use of this information? Um, yes, it depends on where this database comes from. Some uh, databases, there's really no restriction. Some databases, there's, there's minimal restrictions of usage. It, it, you know, your mileage may vary on these databases. Just read it. Any other questions? If I had internet access, we could look people up now, which was what I was looking for. This is fun. Good questions? Thanks.